There are currently seven Metal Gear games in the series that play host to Platinum trophies. Across those games, there are varying levels of difficulty between each Platinum. Some of the trophies you must earn before claiming the coveted Platinum trophy are intended to test your skill in a variety of ways. Some will test your ability to sneak around undetected for the entirety of a playthrough while also playing on the hardest difficulty, and others may task you with finding every single collectible hidden across a vast open world. And finally, there are those trophies that require a grueling and seemingly never-ending grind. So the question is, which Metal Gear game is the hardest to Platinum? Well, to answer that question, I will be using three different metrics to judge each game. Each metric has a maximum rank of five stars, with a five ranking in difficulty, for example, translating to that game being incredibly hard when compared to the rest of the games in the series. Apart from these three metrics, it is super important to note that while I will try to be as objective as possible, a decent amount of the rankings will be based on my own opinions and my own attempts to plant on these games, as well as research that I personally have conducted through various trophy data aggregation websites. It's also important to note that this video was published before the Master Collection Volume 1 has released, so if there are any new trophies or updates to existing trophies, I will make sure to either update the video or make a new one. Before we get into our first game though, I as always want to say a quick thank you to you guys who have been supporting the rapid growth of the channel. It's been growing super fast thanks to all of you, so thank you once again. I truly do appreciate it. If you're not yet subbed, please consider doing so. It really does help me out a ton. Now, without further ado, let's get into our first game. The first game we're going to be taking a look at is the HD collection version of Metal Gear Solid 2 Sons of Liberty for the PS3, and the first metric we're going to be taking a look at is number of playthroughs. Players are required to complete at least 5 playthroughs due to having to collect dog tags in every difficulty with the exception of European Extreme. These are needed for special item trophies which are as follows, Yorkie, Poodle, Beagle, Shiba Inu, St. Bernard, and Great Dane. There's a very common misconception that you need every single dog tag from every single difficulty when in reality, you only need to collect as many dog tags as the special item tied to them requires. Those special items are what actually triggers the acquisition of the trophies. Five playthroughs and all of those dog tags may sound like a lot, but Metal Gear Solid 2 is not a terribly long game especially when you compare it to some of the other games in the series. Please keep in mind that it might take some players more than five playthroughs if they aren't very familiar with MGS2, however, or if they're not familiar with the missable trophies they're required to obtain. For that reason, I am giving Metal Gear Solid 2 Sons of Liberty from the HD Collection a three out of five when it comes to number of playthroughs. Now, moving on to difficulty. Players are required to play on most difficulties, including the second highest difficulty, which is obviously extreme, to receive the Great Dane trophy we mentioned earlier. It is also required to complete all VR and alternative missions for the virtually impossible trophy. These missions range from super easy to incredibly difficult, especially if you're a newcomer to the series. You are then required to achieve first place in 50 of those VR or alternative missions for the In It To Win It trophy. Another special note is that it must be 50 different missions. You cannot farm the same easy mission 50 times to unlock the trophy. For that reason, I am giving Metal Gear Solid 2 the HD Collection version, a 5 out of 5 star ranking in terms of difficulty. Now on to the last category, which is the time investment. The two most notable time sinks will be the dog tag routes for each difficulty, since the higher the difficulty, the more guards you will need to collect dog tags from, and also the 500 plus VR missions that all need to be completed. Keep in mind that you only need to complete the missions you do not need to place in first for this trophy. The player average for the Platinum is around 75 hours, which compared to some of the other games we will touch on later, honestly isn't that bad. For this reason, I am giving the HD Collection version of MGS2 a 3 out of 5 star ranking when it comes to time investment. In terms of pure difficulty, Metal Gear Solid 2 will end up being one of the harder games in the series to Platinum. Having to complete a playthrough on extreme difficulty is one thing. The much more difficult and time consuming task is getting through every every single VR and alternative mission. For those reasons, I am placing Metal Gear Solid 2 in the hard to platinum tier of our ranking. The next game on the list is the HD collection version of Metal Gear Solid 3 Snake Eater, and we're going to start by looking into the number of playthroughs. Admittedly though, there is not much to say here, as the platinum should only take a few playthroughs, and you can actually complete the entire platinum in one playthrough by taking some time to plan your route prior to your run. There are a lot of collectibles that need to be found, and most of the platinum grind for this game will be spent finding them all during one of your playthroughs. As it's incredibly easy to platinum MGS3, and even more so due to the fact that you can platinum it in one playthrough, Metal Gear Solid 3 Snake Eater earns a 1 star rating in number of playthroughs. 
Moving on now to difficulty, and if you thought only having to play through MGS3 once makes the Platinum easy, what if I told you that that one playthrough can be played on the easiest difficulty and you can still earn the Platinum, and it's actually recommended that you do so. The main reason for this is the boss strips you of your items at the beginning of Operation Snake Eater, meaning you cannot shoot Keraton or stun animals you need to collect until you meet up with Eva and she hands over some weapons and supplies. Due to this, you have to backtrack a lot. That is unless you play on very easy since you always have the easy gun with you in that particular difficulty. And since it is recommended to play on very easy, getting through the game and taking out every boss should not be difficult at all. The most difficult aspect of this run will probably be nailing every single Keraton, and especially those during the bike chase toward the end of the game, and also making sure to watch all of the hidden cutscenes. Due to there not being any difficulty requirements whatsoever, and the ability for players to earn this platinum on the easiest difficulty, Metal Gear Solid 3 Snake Eater earns a 1 star rating for difficulty. As far as time investment goes, there are no trophies that present any sort of real grind. Most of the player's time will be used on researching Keraton locations, animal locations, and making sure to pick up all the camouflages and other collectibles along the way. For this reason, MGS3 gets a 2 out of 5 star for time investment. Metal Gear Solid 3 is undeniably the easiest Platinum to achieve if you're setting out to start collecting Metal Gear related trophies. For this reason, I am placing it in the Easy to Platinum category on our list. Next up is Metal Gear Solid 4 Guns of the Patriots, and let's start with number of playthroughs. Even with proper planning and an attack plan that perfectly blueprints the acquisition of all 40 emblems found within MGS4, the Platinum still requires at least 8 playthroughs from the player from the beginning of the game all the way until the very end. For at least 7 of these playthroughs, players are expected to keep a close watch on quite a few statistics in order to track their progress toward a specific rank or ranks. Remember that it will only take 8 playthroughs if you're fully prepared and know exactly what you're doing. For those that are embarking on this endeavor for the first time, it will probably take some extra runs. MGS4 easily earns a 5 star rating for number of playthroughs required. Moving on now to difficulty. Most of your playthroughs will be played on a variety of difficulties as you grind for the various animal ranks, but at least one of them must be played on the highest difficulty with the usual max rank restrictions. These include beating the game in under 5 hours with 0 continues, 0 alerts, 0 kills, and 0 rations used. This is all obviously to end up earning the big boss emblem. Weapons, items, and ammunition cannot be purchased from Drebin in the boss extreme difficulty. Therefore, an added layer to difficulty is the fact that you have to grind out all of those other ranks and emblems while also looking ahead toward your big boss emblem run and start your preparations accordingly. Despite the big boss emblem obviously being the hardest and most prestigious emblem in the game, some of the other ranks and their emblems require quite a lot of game knowledge and perseverance from the player to earn. One thing to note about MGS4 that potentially makes it a bit easier compared to the other Metal Gear games in the series is the fact that you can save as much as you want during your max rank playthroughs, which means if you mess up somewhere along the way, you should hopefully have a save file ready to go that you can continue from. Metal Gear Solid 4, despite being criticized for not having much gameplay, is actually one of the harder games in the series to get through, even more so on the hardest difficulty with the hardest restrictions possible. That's not even counting the fact that a ton of prep work is recommended before you even attempt a max rank run, and that's also discounting the fact that the Big Boss Emblem is only one of 39 other ranks that the player needs to achieve to claim the Platinum. For these reasons, Metal Gear Solid 4 earns its 4 out of 5 star rating for difficulty. Lastly, onto time investment. A decent amount of time is required as many mentioned to plan out at least 8 playthroughs that will hit all 40 emblems required for the Platinum. For most people, planning out and then executing their big boss emblem run will require a lot of trial and error, and that's even if you use a guide. Certain emblems, for example the chicken emblem, require criteria such as over 150 alert phases, over 500 kills, over 50 continues, and the use of over 50 recovery items, and then also to finish the game in over 35 hours, which means you're required to farm for those stats over and over again during a playthrough, as well as any other stats you need to acquire secondary ranks. The sheer amount of planning, guide watching, metric tracking, and not to mention the 8 playthroughs you have to get through earns MGS4 a 4 out of 5 star ranking for time investment. The Metal Gear Solid 4 Platinum is a pretty crazy undertaking that earns its position in the extremely hard to platinum ranking. Metal Gear Solid Peace Walker is the next game on the list. Starting off with number of playthroughs, Peace Walker only requires one save file and one full playthrough, but the game is pretty lengthy and you're required to nearly 100% complete your save file to get the Platinum. This is something a bit unrelated to the number of playthroughs, but it's also something that I did want to mention. Peace Walker has online or multiplayer trophies such as Versus Ops All Rules and Vic Voss, which again, must be earned online. Peace Walker is a long game and it's a bit lengthy when it comes to the Platinum as well, but it's nowhere near as long as some of the other games we'll get into in just a bit. For this reason, I'm giving Peace Walker a 2 out of 5 star rating for number of playthroughs. 
Moving on to difficulty. Due to Peace Walker originally being a PSP game, it's pretty damn easy. And it's especially easy when you compare it to the titles we've gone over so far. You cannot choose your difficulty before starting a new game like in previous entries, but the game and its missions do get progressively harder. Some of the custom AI battles can become pretty challenging toward the end of the game, and eventually players are required to S-rank all main ops and extra ops, but you can wait until you're better equipped and earn S-ranks later with much more ease. As a result of originally releasing as a game intended for handhelds, Peace Walker is probably the easiest game in the series when it comes to enemy AI, the size of its levels, and the length of its missions. Most players won't struggle too much until hours upon hours into their playthrough. The most difficult task is going to be getting all of the main missions as well as all the extra op missions unlocked and completed with S ranks across the board. For these reasons, Peace Walker earns itself a 2 out of 5 star rating in the difficulty category. Lastly, Peace Walker will require a fair bit of time investment from the player. As mentioned, having to complete an S rank every main ops and extra ops mission will require some time. Higher end unlocks such as stealth camouflage and the bandana, which are both needed for trophies by the way, require hours of grinding post main game missions to bolster your mother base teams and allowing you to unlock the recipes needed to craft those items. Some of the later AI or vehicle battle missions can drag on and there are quite a few of them. Time is significantly cut by having a friend with high end equips already unlocked to help you out once you get to those harder missions. While it will demand some of your time, the grind isn't too intensive and missions are designed to be bite sized so taking a break and focusing on other aspects of the game needed to progress is always an option. Peace Walker gets a 3 out of 5 star rating for time investment. Overall, Peace Walker is a relatively fair and fun game to get the platinum for with enough patience. Once you beat the main game all the way through to the second red ending, the real grind begins. I suggest asking a friend for help or looking for someone online who is also hoping to get the platinum and asking them to link up for some of those harder missions. You can also knock out the Trader Trophy, Deliverer Trophy, and Vic Voss Trophy this way. Peace Walker is a pretty cozy platinum and for that reason it gets placed in the normal difficulty ranking on our list. We will now be taking a look at Metal Gear Rising Revengeance. As far as number of playthroughs go, only a few are recommended, but it can take people over 3 to fully prepare themselves for Revengeance difficulty. Runs can be cut down by starting on hard difficulty and then moving on to very hard to finish off any missed collectibles or to prep before Revengeance. Revengeance difficulty can be unlocked immediately by entering the Konami code at the main menu, but it is still highly recommended to go through at least 2 playthroughs and complete all 20 VR missions before you attempt your Stormbringer run on Revengeance difficulty. Rising as a whole is extremely quick to get through even for a beginner. You can probably get through your first 2 prep runs in about 5 or 6 hours and that's being very generous. Due to most players technically only needing 3 playthroughs to achieve the Platinum, Metal Gear Rising Revengeance gets a 2 out of 5 star rating in number of playthroughs. Difficulty is where it gets interesting for Metal Gear Rising. If you're not an experienced Revengeance or action game player, this Platinum will push you to your absolute limits. You're required to beat bosses on hard difficulty or higher without taking any hits or any damage. You're also required to S rank everything on Revengeance difficulty, which translates to all enemy encounters, including the hidden encounters, as well as boss fights. The last few VR missions, most notably VR mission number 18, are played on the equivalent of Revengeance difficulty. This means that even with a maxed out Raiden equipped with the best weapons and the best special items, claiming these trophies will be no easy task and will no doubt require multiple tries for everyone but the most experienced players. Metal Gear Rising Revengeance deserves a 5 out of 5 star rating in the difficulty department. And lastly, Rising is a very, very short game, especially since you'll be skipping all of the codec calls and cutscenes. Actual time investment will vary from player to player due to differences in skill. Preparing for the Revengeance difficulty run shouldn't take more than a couple of main game playthroughs and the completion of the 20 VR missions present in the game. The most significant grind is going to be your Revengeance difficulty S rank run and the various no-hit boss battle trophies. Although there is some prep work to be done, the time investment for the Metal Gear Rising Revengeance Platinum shouldn't be very significant for most players. Rising gets a 3 out of 5 in the time investment category. Revengeance is probably the game whose rating most depends on the ability of the player. If you are able to get everything you need done in the first two runs and are comfortable with how the game plays and the combat system, the Revengeance playthrough as well as the no-hit trophy shouldn't be too difficult to achieve. However, on the other hand, if you are not an action game player or someone who is able to master mechanics quickly, this game may end up being a bit more difficult. Due to this, I will be placing it in the hard category behind MGS2.
Next on our list is Metal Gear Solid 5 The Phantom Pain, and we're first going to look at number of playthroughs. Very similar to Peace Walker, only one playthrough of The Phantom Pain is required, but please keep in mind that the game is a bit lengthier than Peace Walker. Your one playthrough of The Phantom Pain is going to be very thorough, as you'll once again need to S-rank all main missions as well as all side ops. On top of that, there are trophies for developing a certain amount of items, collecting all blueprints and key items, as well as raising all your units to level 50. It's safe to say the Phantom Pain will keep you busy for quite a while as you try and earn the Platinum. For this reason, TPP earns a 4 out of 5 star rating for number of playthroughs. Now on to difficulty. The Phantom Pain being a modern game means a lot more aspects of it are streamlined compared to previous entries in the series, making it a bit easier to play. Things like controls and the fluidity of maneuvering through the open world as you take on a variety of missions should feel right at home for most players. As you progress through these missions, enemies will adjust to your playstyle, however, the game doesn't get much harder as a result of this. Missions themselves get progressively harder, but it's counteracted as Venom Snake and his arsenal expands. Similarly to Peace Walker, you can always double back for S ranks after you've upgraded your equipment. Phantom Pain is definitely nowhere near the hardest game in the series in any aspect. The game tries its best to throw obstacles in the way of the player, but as long as you're developing your units and crafting upgraded versions of your weapons, as well as taking advantage of all the different ways you can approach missions, most players will breeze past 90% of what's required for this Platinum Trophy. For that reason, Metal Gear Solid 5 The Phantom Pain earns a 3 out of 5 star difficulty rating. As far as time investment, one of the main grinds is going to be S ranking all main missions and all of the side ops. Not only do you need to S rank missions, but you also need to complete every single side task for every single mission. There are also trophies like Collector and Conservation, which will require you to seek out every single animal in the game, as well as every single key item and blueprint. The time investment for the Phantom Pain Platinum is basically the same as Peace Walker, and in some aspects, it could even be considered less time consuming since there aren't as many vehicle missions or custom AI battles. For this reason, the Phantom Pain earns a 3 out of 5 star rating in time investment. The Phantom Pain should be a pretty straightforward and chill Platinum trophy to earn. After progressing through the main story, most players will be around 75 to 80% trophy completion, which means with just a little more perseverance, you can easily attain the Platinum Trophy. I am placing Metal Gear Solid 5 The Phantom Pain just ahead of Peace Walker in the normal category. We are now finally at the last game on our list, which is also, as I understand, everyone's favorite Metal Gear game. Just kidding, all jokes aside, let's get into Metal Gear Survive. When it comes to number of playthroughs, very similar to TPP and Peace Walker before it, only one save file and only one playthrough is needed to achieve the Survive Platinum. One major disclaimer, however, is that this game has a few trophies that need to be earned online in multiplayer. Having said that, you can complete and earn those online-only trophies solo, but some of the later salvage missions can get pretty challenging. However, the Rod and Snake trophy must must be completed with the assistance of another player. Your playthrough of Metal Gear Survive will be quite extensive, and the fact that there are a plethora of online multiplayer trophies, including one that requires grinding one particular metric with an ally, means Survive will keep you busy for enough time to earn itself a 4 out of 5 star rating in number of playthroughs. When it comes to difficulty, Survive is definitely a step above the Phantom Pain before it, and even just in general when the entire franchise is taken into consideration, especially early on in the game before you've established your base and automatized its functions. The hunger and thirst survival the survival aspect of the game may be difficult to compensate for early on in the game, especially for those not familiar with survival games. Weapons and ammo being scarce for the first half of the game or so means players are up for a challenge from pretty much the get-go. And finally, the combat is very, very different from any other Metal Gear game, including the one that it's based off, which is obviously the Phantom Pain. For these reasons, Survive earns a 4 out of 5 in the difficulty rating. Metal Gear Survive is easily the most time-intensive and grindy game in the entire series. The main campaign alone is fairly long and drags on a a little toward the end, but that is only the very tip of the iceberg. The post-game grind starts off by tasking you to unlock the rest of the classes, explore the entirety of both maps, and survive more than 140 days without dying, among other tasks. Once you've taken care of that, it's time to start the multiplayer grind. There are six multiplayer exclusive trophies that will challenge you and your friends as you take on salvage missions. Those will also help contribute towards some of the other extremely grindy trophies, such as the trophies that require players to kill at least 300 enemies with every weapon type. And lastly, the three hardest trophies in the entire game to earn will easily take well over 100 hours on their own. There's not much to say other than survival will take you a very, very long time to platinum, easily earning itself a 5 out of 5 star rating in time investment. Metal Gear Survive's Platinum is hard enough just taking the sheer amount of dedication and time it takes to achieve the Platinum into consideration. Adding the fact that it's not a particularly easy entry in the series by any means just elevates the difficulty players will face in order to earn the Platinum. It's also undeniably the most hated game in the franchise, which means the hardest obstacle in getting the Platinum is 
is getting players to actually play it. Metal Gear Survive joins MGS4 at the extremely hard to platinum tier. Well, there you have it. This is the final ranking for the hardest Metal Gear games to platinum in order from the most difficult all the way down to the easiest. I hope you all enjoyed going through all the Metal Gear games and their most notable trophies with me. And I am going to revisit this topic in the future with a more deep dive style video for each game and every single trophy you can earn in each of those games. As always though, thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next one.